All right, welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. <clears throat> All right, Jim, you're here. Great. I see your audio is connecting. It'll happen any second here. Ah, now oh, we there we go. Okay. Awesome. All right. Okay, so I'll just start and then Tony will join. Um, are, are other people going to be joining yeah. us? With, other with, people will be with, flooding in and, and they will not have video or audio. So they'll uh, just be listening to us talk. Can they see us? Yes. Okay. You look good. <laughs> Yeah, but for some reason, the, the video deleted my hair. <laughs> it's one of those filters. How the hell that happened? You could use that joke if you want. <laughs> one of those filters, like, you know, the ones that put ears on. And... <laughs> yeah, well. All right. Well, this is Better Photo Jim, and we're starting our webinar here. I'm here with Jim Zuckerman, and we're just going to let <clears throat> participants come on in. and Welcome, welcome, welcome. We see all sorts of fun happy people come on on in i see deb and and i see richard and claudia clifford i see carol carolyn welcome <laughs> jackie so uh we have jim zuckerman here and uh we will have tony sweet here momentarily and uh again this is just continuing the celebration of 20 five years online. I'm so happy and so proud to get to this spot. Uh, the month of March is bringing me back to a time when I was living in an Airstream trailer in a valley in Washington that flooded often. And, and I had my Airstream trailer up on a platform that I built out of railroad ties. So it was four feet high up off the ground. So so I could stay out of the, the wet water when it flooded. And uh, one time it did flood and I had a, a canoe take me to and from work. <laughs> and, and then once the waters receded, we had a friend visit. And, um, and that friend showed us how she was doing her master's thesis on this new thing called the web. <laughs> And it, it was so mind blowing to me. I saw that I could put my own words and my own photos and publish them without getting the approval of some editor in New York. And I just was so blown away that I rushed out and got HTML for dummies, read it from cover to cover. And in it, he, he, talked, about, um, he talked about doing what you love, following your passion, and writing about what you love. And so I wrote about photography and the rest is history. People started emailing me, asking me questions about photography and we started and I just, my motto in the beginning was honest answers for budding photographers. And I pinned that date on when I learned about the web as March 23rd, 1996. I don't know if that's <laughs> the exact date, but I think it was somewhere right around there. And, and wow. Yeah, we had a lot on. Welcome, Tony. <clears throat> we now have Tony Sweet and Jim Zucker. Hey, guys. Board. Yeah, it's so good to see you guys. It's been a long time. Love seeing your faces. Big reunion. Yeah. It's been a while. And I want to welcome everybody who's done the call. So far, we have a lot of great people. And I see uh, John Zimmerman uh, saying hi to Jim Zuckerman from Montreal, Canada. And um, if you have any questions as we go, <clears throat> feel free to put it in the little Q&A section. Of course, you can put things in the chat as well. But if you have a question for either Tony Sweet or Jim Zuckerman or both of them, uh, feel free to put <coughs> the Q&A tab down there. And I see one person putting it in. 
And I have a bunch of great questions that I'll be working off of, but we're, we're going to let this thing be fluid and fun. And if you have anything that you would like to ask, feel free to put it in the Q and A and we'll see what we can get to. We'll do our best. We're going to try to keep this to an hour just to respect everybody's time. And, um, Oh yeah, we're going to have a lot of fun. This is going to be great. So I'm going to take a peek at that question that popped in and, um, yep. How do I get my camera on my iPad? Probably how to use your camera. I don't have it. Okay. So we'll let those questions come in. <clears throat> and I just want to start by saying, thank you, Tony. Thank you, Jim, for joining us. It's so wonderful to have you on board. And I really appreciate you taking the time to answer these questions and help uh, all these photography enthusiasts, myself included, take our photography up to the next level. So thank you so much for being here. You're very welcome. You're welcome. Pleasure. <laughs> now, most of you already know Jim and Tony, they are fantastic photographers. In fact, I don't have to give them an introduction because uh, so many of you know their reputation as being greats in the world of photography. In fact, one of you in accepting my invitation said that, said two very great photographers, I'm in, I'm there. And uh, so, you know, but for, for anybody else, I'll tell you that uh, Jim, Tony and I go back so many years and I love their photography. And I've, I've seen uh, just so many masterpieces. You know, Ansel Adams had his goal of making one masterpiece a month, 12 masterpieces a year. And I think Tony and Jim blow that goal out of the water. And I just love seeing your beautiful, fantastic landscapes, your Photoshop work, your flower photography, your fine art. It's incredible. And uh, again, welcome aboard. Um, what is new with you guys as far as um you know what are you working on now what's what's some project that you're excited about and who wants to go first jay-z the first there sir all right well uh because of the covid situation i continue to do online training uh people really appreciate my photoshop stuff uh when i finished my first photoshop course people kind of like begged me for a, a, you know, a second one. Where do we go from here? So I did that. And now people are begging me for a third one. <laughs> uh, and I'm, and uh, because some people are still concerned about traveling internationally, I am developing more domestic uh, photography tours. I just uh, did one, uh, saw my website now, Michigan Lighthouses. Uh, they're beautiful. And I'm going to be researching one, uh, for uh, the Southeast uh, swamps, the swamp tour. It's a very great photography in the North Carolina, South Carolina, Virginia swamps. So that, that's, that's what I'm doing. Wow. Oh, that yeah. sounds fantastic. That's the adventure and the beautiful subjects. How about you, Tony? Oh man, I've been home also for the last, uh, God knows how long, but I started, um, shooting a lot locally around here because of a necessity and because I've never scattered where I live. Mm -hmm. Imagine that, you know, and you're and forced when to. You do that, yeah, I know, but when uh, I'm always leaving, I'm always going somewhere. So now that I'm not leaving, <clears throat> I have the opportunity and there's an opportunity to uh, just take all the side roads here and it's blowing me away. Mm. I got a fly show on it. Yeah. I talk about shooting where you live and what to look for. And, um, but it's amazing. You know, around here, and I got a few books in the pipeline, and for red book in the pipeline, and a few more in the pipeline, and um, same thing Jim does, teach privately, and uh, that kind of thing, and just uh, just hanging in there, man. <laughs> That's great, Tony. I love your books. They are each little works of art. Um, I love the Thank format. You, I love the focus on a photo. You know, just taking up the page. It's they're they're inspir inspiration in a capsule. Thank you, Jim. There's more coming, but thank you very much. I appreciate that. Awesome. All right. So one of the questions that I've had in the surveys that I've done recently um, have to do with photography tips. And this question is for both of you. Um, so you can 
Let's see. Uh, Jim started first. So Tony, you can start this time. And uh -oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> it's basically just what's, uh, you know, uh, like your top three photo tips. What, when you think about the things that have made the biggest difference for you, what would be three things that you'd say, you gotta do this? Well, you got to um, change perspectives, number one. If, if, you know, if you're out shooting and you have the sense of, you know, how to use your camera and work in the field, yeah. um, people tend to shoot at their own height. And the first thing I do is ask, how do I get up high and shoot down? Mm. And then always shoot from low, shoot. Just change your perspective, you know, and, and, and do that. Um, don't quit your day job. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. Don't, don't quit your day job yet. <laughs> Not at this time. That's a good tip number two. Yeah. Be wise. And, and, and basically just to just immerse yourself. If you want to do this, immerse yourself in it. It's, it's all, it's everywhere. Like, uh, books pdfs uh youtube stuff it's everywhere whatever you want to know or a lot of it yeah is um read, you read about it yeah it's all in front of you you just got to find it and read it it's all there yeah well, then when you're done great. yeah take yeah. a you know, you're like learn what you can and take courses but also take a, a location a workshop where you're one-on-one -on -one with the professional yeah. and, and that's um that helps also. It all comes together. Yeah, it just all works um, together. But you it need really personal interaction, is. and you need to you know, read books and watch videos. It's just all total yeah. immersion. Yeah, there's so many inspiring photos out there alone, and that that could really just fill your your inspiration up and get you going. But I love what you said about taking a, an in-person workshop as soon as that's possible. As soon as that feels good for you, if you feel comfortable with it. Um, you feel ready. When you, yeah, when you feel, you'll know when you feel ready. It's like, exactly. like I, need, I need something more, you know? Yeah. And that's, it goes back to, you know, don't quit your day job. I love that too. <laughs> I, I remember one time I did quit my day job too soon. And I was so filled with the pressure to put bread on the table that my creative juices just dried up. So I, I think that, yeah, you, you need to listen to that little voice that says, okay, you know what? I'm actually having a revenue stream come in here and I don't, um, I don't need to feel fearful. That's what it's, what it's all about. Then you can still be super creative and, and enjoy yourself as, as you go. That's what we want. Photography is the joy there of photography. Go. That's awesome. Thanks, yeah. Tony. Okay. Jay-Z, how about you? What are three photo oh. tips that you would give somebody? Three things that, that you must be doing. They just have made the biggest difference for you. Um, I have thought a lot about how to communicate what I know to students. How to have them really grasp uh, the fundamentals of photography and how to turn those fundamentals into art. If I can bring this down from three to one, I'd like to do that because the number one tip that I give anybody is, and, and it, takes, it takes beginning photographers and intermediate photographers a long time to get this. You don't capture what you see. Our eyes don't compress like a telephoto does. We never see an out-of-focus background, ever. We don't look at a landscape with a wide-angle lens on our face. So it's, it, it's difficult for people to grasp in the beginning that you have to, what, what, the way I say it is you have to think as the lens sees. In other words, you have to look at a landscape mentally through a wide angle or through a telephoto, because that's what you're gonna capture. So many times I've heard people say, I just didn't capture what I saw. Well, the truth is you don't ever. You and never do. you never do. So you have to think as a, as a wide angle sees, and you have to think as a telephoto sees and as a macro lens sees. And even if you, if you have a fish eye as a fish eye sees. Mm -hmm. So that, that, that switch that you have to turn it in your brain goes from here's what I see 
but here's what I can capture with my lenses. Yeah. That's that's the number one challenge and tip that I would offer. Mm, that's great. That's a three in one for sure. I love <laughs> that. And and it's so true too, because yes, you are experiencing this amazing religious experience. If you're in some national park in the morning, you're feeling the cool air, you're 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 smelling the fragrances all around you. And, and on top of that, you're having a visual experience that is unlike anything that your camera is going to capture. So. Um, actually, that, that's part of what I should have said. And that is many people get emotionally involved in what they're seeing, whether it's a puppy or a landscape or a rainbow, whatever. And I, I, I always tell people, you can emote later <laughs> oh, that's get, great. get the picture now get the picture now and and you do that by thinking like a camera that's, thinking ex- like a lens going exactly into- think like the, like the lens focus on your what kind of depth of field you want what about the exposure and make sure you're critically focused and after you've got the picture then you can jump up and down or cry or, <laughs> or however you want to express yourself with the emotions but now you've got the moment Oh, I love that. And that leads perfectly into one of our questions here from Cliff. He says, open question, how do you remove your emotional attachment from your own pictures to view them objectively? And, um, you know, you're, you're already answering it right there. Um, but is there any other thoughts that you or Tony have about how do you remove that emotional component and be less subjective and more objective when you're viewing it, it's not that it's not that clear cut to me like the, uh, it, it, it's it, it's not where the, you know, the emotion and where the technique begins yeah they're all kind of together you know they all kind of exist in the same place yeah it's a matter of like learning how to focus your attention i mean i get like stoked it's like God, stop the car that's great man grab the camera but when you're set up everything gets the zen zones out okay the aperture thing but when you shoot so yeah. they're compartmentalized there's yeah. the the excitement and there, there's the okay let's take care of business part so yeah, it, 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 yeah there are two different steps exactly two different steps and and that reminds me of how it is with writing you know you might be very inspired if you're a writer and you write something but then you're going to come back to it and at a different time you're going to have more of the mechanics in your mind and you're going to come back to it again and you might have another person look at it or you might read it out loud and then you're realizing oh i've said the word uh extrapolate five times in this paragraph and i didn't hear that before (laughs) right right Um, (laughs) so that's great and i think though that that is a great question um because it is so important to do that and i love it both what you were saying jay-z at the time of photographing you are taking (laughs) out the emotions and thinking objectively about what's going to happen what is going to be captured this background is going to be totally blurry if I do this, but what if I what if I really want it totally blurry, or what if I want it uh, everything to be crystal clear, sharp from the beginning to the end? And then you think in that way objectively, and then you go on and you think that objectively when you're reviewing your photos afterwards, and you're thinking, okay, how is this really going to um, strike someone who wasn't there with that little puppy? Who wasn't Not seeing that it. unicorn riding up on the rainbow? Yeah. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> oh, great. Okay, well, let's see. Here's the yeah. next question for you. Uh, this is from Rudy, <clears throat> and this is for you, Jim. It's uh, what do you recommend for getting off of the auto setting more? Um, you know, do you have any any advice for Rudy or others who are trying to get off auto? Well, there's, there's two different kinds of auto. Mm-hmm. Most cameras have like a green rectangle and that's fully automatic. Mm-hmm. That, then you can use program mode, which is partially automatic. Mm-hmm. Um, but it basically comes down to how much control do you want to have over your pictures? As you were just saying, you can have complete depth of field. You can have shallow depth of field. You can underexpose if need be or overexpose. There are so many um, 
controls. You can set the ISO high. You can set your shutter speed fast if you're shooting action. All of those are, are choices that you can make. If you put the camera on auto, the camera doesn't know what you want. Right. The camera doesn't know what you're gonna like afterwards. Camera doesn't know anything except what it's programmed to do. So if you are serious about being artistic with your pictures, you have to go off auto. You, you, you know, I never ever shoot on auto. I'm sure Tony doesn't either. Right. Oh, I we, do. I want to talk. I want to talk about that. Do, do you really? I absolutely do. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, on program or full auto? Program. Okay, I use program too, but I'm talking okay. full automatic. No, <laughs> no never, the, never. Okay. By the way, Jim, a lot of people, beginners especially, don't understand. Many people think the program is just you don't think, mm -hmm. but that's not true. Program is designed to get, it, it assumes you're hand holding the camera yeah. and it gives you the fastest shutter speed given the light and your ISO. Yeah. So if you're shooting a birthday party, sure, program. If, if you're shooting a festival and things are happening fast, program is great because you don't have to think. You right. set, your, set your ISO to a certain level and, and the camera, and because you don't have time to fiddle with the camera. Photography, photography, sure. Yeah, yeah, but if you're doing a landscape or a portrait, uh, then that's very, very different. Then you have to make choices. So, in fact, when I tell people I use program sometimes, they don't believe me. You know, you using program, but, but it, it, ha it has its place. It does indeed. But the camera is the computer, you know, so when I shoot infrared, I'm on program, period. All that does to me is that gives you a good histogram. Mm -hmm. That's all that I want in IR. I get that, and like all the stuff gets done in software. I just want to capture a good, wide dynamic range infrared. And program gives you that histogram. Oh, that's Piece fantastic, now too. Yeah, you're just going after the basics at that point, so you have something to work with. Correct. It's step one. There's still step three, four, five, six, et cetera. <laughs> exactly. Well, that's great. That's really helpful. There's two different levels of auto at least. But the, the full green rectangle on most on a lot of cameras, that's too auto. But that program mode, I like how you guys talk about specific uh, contexts, specific yeah. situations where you do that. That's well, I can great. tell you the, the number of times that I uh, it was in Cuba when I first started going there. I'm still shooting like, you know, everything like after coyotes and landscape, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking, oh man, look at that shot. It was gone. It was gone. Yeah. Okay, setting, boom, gone. And then my, you know, my co teacher said, Now, what are you doing? Shooting a program. I said, Really? I said, Yeah. And that, that, that was it. Boom. Never, never left it for street and then for red. <laughs> you can't that's, waste time adjusting when things are happening in microseconds. That's so true. You have to yeah, be ready shoot, to capture shoot that. Shoot immediately. Yeah. Okay, good. I got another question for you, Tony, that kind of leads into that. You're talking about Cuba. <laughs> What are the most memorable photos that you've seen that have an, had an impact on why you do what you do? That's from Rita. And she's act, asking, what are the most memorable photos you have seen that have an, had an impact on why you do what you do? Well, that's easy. You know, I saw a um, picture on an old Life magazine. I'm not that old. I saw it in the museums <laughs> years ago when I was a kid. You know? And I saw red palm trees in the cover. Red palm trees. I said, wait a minute, man. Something ain't right. So I'm reading it. I can see it right now in my, in my, in my head. You know, I was like, go through the magazine. It's like, color infrared. And I said, wow. Wow. And I, I've been there ever since. You know, I just love that. I mean, it's such an impression. Something that bizarre. That looks so good. I was like, what is that? You know? And uh, yeah, that's one. Um and, and, and many student pictures, believe it or not, you know, I mean, every, everyone's got a great, I get this theory. Everyone's got a world-class shot. They have one. Everyone, you know, to pick up things from them. I mean, uh, I learn from, more from students than anybody else, to be honest, seeing what they're doing. The teacher is the student and the student is the teacher. Always. often. You, you got it. Oh, that's you got great. It. That, that's neat that you can remember that specific color infrared. Ten years old, Ten years old yeah. Made an impression, yeah. I love that. How old were you, you say? Ten. 
10. Wow, that's cool. In the clerk room, a fourth grade classroom. Yeah. Oh, that's neat. That's awesome. <laughs> All right, Jim. Jackie asks, if I were interested in starting a photography business, what would be your top three or your top one recommendation for success? <laughs> well, I would first try to talk Jackie out of it. <laughs> Um, you, you know, there's, there's always room in every business for a person who is motivated, highly motivated, um, persistent, uh, doesn't understand the word no, and they just, you know, forge ahead. And if they, if they, if they have a business head, they can succeed. And there are many, many types of photography businesses. Um, but the photography business has changed radically in the past 10 years. Um, if this were 10 years ago, 12 years ago, I would say the very first thing is, is join a stock photo agency because, because they were a viable source of income. Not now. Um, you know, I, I'd have to know really what kind of things she likes to photograph, but most people like photographing nature, landscapes and animals and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, you know, a few, a few others will tell me, well, I like street photography or I like portraits or studio photography, but most people want to do what I do, uh, nature and travel. And as far as I can tell, the, the only way to make money today, and, and I'm talking serious money. I mean, if, if Jackie joined a stock, let's say three stock photo agencies today, Alamy and, uh, and a couple others I could name, she could, she, she could make a little money, a few thousand dollars a year not, en not enough to, to, to support her. Um, but the only viable route that I can see, and <clears throat> you know, maybe Tony has some of the thoughts, but is, is workshops, tours, and, and online teaching. Um, but, but especially photography tours. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why so many people are doing it. Mm -hmm. Be because all the stock photographers who are making a living that way either retired, went into another business, or, or began leading tours. It's true. Uh, you, you know, it, it, like I said, there's always room for an entrepreneur. For, for example, uh, about, um, about 12, 13, 14 years ago, there was, there was a guy who was buying pictures from me, and, and he sold large uh, prints that he actually ha had made printed in China. He'd bring them over the, by the container full. There were like 1,600 prints per container. And he sold to 800 furniture stores across the country. Wow. So there is, it, it's just one little way to make money if you can get into that niche. Mm -hmm. it, here, here's another idea I've had. And I had this idea, but I've never pursued it. So, so Jackie, this is all yours if you want it. <laughs> um, if, if you go to big art houses, paintings bring, bring more money than photographs because there's just an in, intrinsic value to paintings that photography doesn't have. So why can't you send a digital file to China and have it painted in oil or acrylic on any size you want? And, and you tell them, don't sign it you sign it when it comes back to the US. And now you have an original oil by Jackie. Original so, oil. So now, now you can market oils to the art market that are originals. I thought that was a good idea, but- That's a great idea. Thank you. But I'm, I'm only- try, I try that actually. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm only one person, I can't do everything. And I, I, was, I had my fingers in so many pots, um, but so-, so it, it's ideas like that that can make you successful if you're aggressive in the marketplace. So that, that's my answer. 
I love it. <clears throat> that is so true. Um, you know, there, there are lots of different possibilities and it's all about finding a niche that really works for you, finding something that isn't being done, or you just analyze the question. You think about, do I want to just make a few thousand dollars? Do I want to just have more of a validation and a sense of joy and like, yes, I am on the right track. And yes, I do have a talent and I have an eye for photography and the market is telling me that. But if, if you really need to put bread on the table, then um, you either have to be don't entrepreneurial. Don't quit your day job. Yeah, and don't quit your day job. Exactly. Um, Jim, Jim, let me mention one other thing. Uh -huh. um, when I first started selling my work, uh, this was, well, a very long time ago. In fact, uh, you mentioned earlier that we go back years. Um, you know, the, the, fa the famous... Uh, Civil War photographer, Matthew Brady. He was yeah. one of my students. Yeah, yeah he, was, he was one of my students. <laughs> so a long time ago, my first camera. A, a long time ago, I, I started selling my pictures and I use a book. It's, it's still valid and published today. It's called Photographer's Market. It's published by F&W Publications. It's an annual publication and it lists thousands of places to sell your pictures. Music publishers, jigsaw pu publishers, poster companies, greeting card companies, um, uh, stock agencies, just a long, long list. There's, there's thousands mm -hmm. of companies that buy pictures listed in there and they tell generally the price range, who to contact. Uh, that, it, it's, it's only like $23 or something. Get that book and, and, and try. You know, uh, when, when I started, of course, I was sending out transparencies um, and, and a self-addressed stamp return envelope. But today same you can, you. yeah, same mm -hmm. with, you, with you, Tony. We started about the same time. Um, Pretty much. But, but you know, mm -hmm. now you can email, you can uh, use Dropbox mm -hmm. and all this stuff. And, and so you can do it with no money. And if they reject you, the, the hardest thing is to get over the rejection. Mm -hmm. but, but again, we talked about getting your emotions out of this. You cannot be emotionally attached to your pictures because you love them, that they could be great. And the photo editor could think they're great, but maybe he doesn't have a use for them at that time. That's maybe great. maybe they just agreed to run a story of that subject, or maybe, uh, maybe whatever. There's all kinds of reasons why pictures are not used beside them not being good. So, yeah. so every rejection you get, you just, you just turn around and package that up to a different magazine or, or exactly. jigsaw puzzle company and you send it out again. You, you, you cannot let rejection hurt you at all or else you're doomed. That's right. That is so right. You know, I was just reading about Walt Disney and I can't remember whether it was Bambi or Fantasia, but whatever it was, it was meant to, to be released in December of 1941. <clears throat> and, um, it was going to actually go on the cover of Time magazine is what it was, but it got bumped by some other historical event. So it wasn't <laughs> a matter of Walt Disney getting rejected by Time magazine. The editor just said, there's no way we can talk about animation at this time. It's When, when, it's, when, 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 when Pearl Harbor just happened. Right. World exactly. World II, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> but we're talking with Jim Zuckerman and Tony Sweet, and we're answering questions from Better Photo members. And if you're just joining us now, we're having a great time learning all about the art and and the the, the business of photography as well. And we have Don't forget some, fun. Yeah, we have some great questions. I have one other question from Jackie that that I really love. And let's start with you, Tony, on this one. What has been the greatest contribution to your success as a photographer? I, I love that question. And what, what, what do you think of when you think of what has been the greatest contribution to your success? Oh, the same with that, with uh, any other business, you got to be, uh, they've got a lot. First of all, being good is a given. That's a given. Set that aside. Set that yeah. aside. They've got to like you. You got to be dependable. You can't complain. If they want something today, get it to them today. Mm -hmm. If you can't say you can't do it, tell them the truth. And to be uh, dependable and, and be uh, reliable and do good work and follow up. 
just human traits, mm. like any other business. Any other it's a business, like any other business, if anything yeah. succeeds That's in like all business. It, they've got to like you. They got to enjoy dealing with you. you. You can't be a pain. It's just simple. It's yeah. simple stuff. I love that. And I, your first comment about being good, just putting that aside, you remind me of Steve Martin. I, I love one time he said, you know, everybody's always asking me, how do I get an agent? How do I get discovered? And he said, that's not the question you should be asking. The first question you'd be asking is, am I good? <laughs> how yeah, can I get exactly, better? <laughs> that's exactly what right. That's the basics. <laughs> and then from there, it goes to uh, things like persistence and and being likable, having having good person, interpersonal skills. Those are some of the basics. How about you, Jim? How would you answer that question? What has been the greatest factor um, that has contributed to your success as a photographer? Uh, two things. First, um, <clears throat> divorcing myself from my pictures emotionally and seeing them as a product. Mm. If If this photo editor or publication company didn't want my pictures. I, there was no feelings of rejection at all. I, that took me years to get there. Um, mm. And the second thing was uh, joining a stock photo agency. Mm. That, that freed me up so that I had a steady income and then I could diversify from there. That I, I joined a stock photo agency in '87, and that com wow. Wow. that completely changed my, my career. Different world back then. Very, yeah. Oh, night and day. Mm, it is. It is a different world. So that worked for you at that time. It really gave you that steady stream of income, and it might be different um, right now. Well. We, we have another question coming in, and this is from D, and it, it just ties exactly in with what I was just thinking about. D asks, what motivates you to keep producing quality photos? You know, and another, another way to say that came in from Susan beforehand, what techniques do you use to keep motivated and to stretch your imagination and keep photography fresh? Who would like to take that one? What what motivates you and what, what keeps your photography fresh and keeps you stretching your imagination? Tony? Well, I can jump, I can jump in here, sure. Um, well, I'm passionate about it, number one. I mean, I, I, I love as much as much uh, today as I did when I first, when I first picked the camera. It hasn't changed at all. My enthusiasm has gotten greater over the last uh, 35 years. <laughs> That's a long time. <laughs> but... Um, Nothing passions is just a lot of it and experimenting, trying new things. Um, mm -hmm. Take it, uh, you shoot a day with a wide angle lens only, you shoot a day with a telephoto lens only, go to someplace new, go out when it's 10 degrees below zero, you know, go out when it's 95. Degrees. I mean, just go out at unusual times that make you think different, you know. Um, and you've got to be enthusiastic. Like, you can't manufacture that, you got to love what you're doing. Mm -hmm. You really do. And um, what you say about just using like a telephoto one day and a wide angle, that reminds me that um, we'll be doing a 25 day photo challenge. Maybe we'll start off a little bit shorter for some people. On the, I got a lot of feedback saying, uh, I can only do about seven days. <clears throat> so we'll start with like maybe a seven or 10 day challenge and go to 25. But one day we'll be, yeah, I love your, I'm just going to use all those ideas. One day do telephoto, <laughs> one day only wide angle. Um, how about you, Jim? How, how do you keep motivated and stay fresh? Well, Tony was right in that if you don't have the passion for it, then, you know, you're, it, it's, um, you're just going to lose. But I love photographing so many different things. And I, my, my greatest fear when I was trying to choose a profession back when I was in my early 20s was I didn't want to be bored. Yes. And so, you know, I love photographing all kinds of stuff from puppies to portraits, to landscapes, to the night sky, to macro, to s special effects. Um, and so I'm always changing my subject matter. I find that to be extremely stimulating. Mm. And that's why I love to travel so much because 
Travel yeah. photography encompasses every aspect of photography there is. You know, um, huge interiors like cathedrals and festivals where people are dancing and moving. And then, then you have macro and you have wildlife. It, it's everything. Mm -hmm. And so I'm constantly visually stimulated. And I, I love that. Uh, um, I, I'm sure there are photographers who photograph the diversity that I do, but I don't know any. Mm. <laughs> so Me neither, Jim. Me neither. Oh, well, you don't know well, anybody sure. else other than Jim or yourself, Tony? <laughs> Oh, no, I'm not even that class. Jim does uh, more than anybody I know. Uh, I, I, I mean, Jim, you know, I, I, I do dinosaurs and I do nudes. <laughs> I know you. But do you do, do you do, I mean, do you I mean, do I mean, nude dinosaurs? <laughs> I, I, I haven't done one of those yet, but, but it's a good idea. <laughs> Got to keep fresh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right, I have another question that is from Eric. And Eric says, more and more I find myself going to my iPhone to take a shot. And because uh, you know it's often readily available on my walks and such, and Eric, I can totally relate. Just today, I went for a walk and I saw these Canada geese walking along and they just perfectly aligned with a little arrow in the, si in the, uh, in the street and I had to take a shot with my iPhone. So Eric asks, where do you see iPhone or smartphone agraphy going? Any, any thoughts from either one of you? Well, it's getting better and better, you know, but um, yeah. the sensor is as big as your little fingernail, you know, mm -hmm. and it, it can't keep up with the largest sensor. It just can't. It's a, it, it's a different occupation almost, you know. So mm -hmm. it, it's, the yeah, iPhone is tremendous. It is. It's a great tool for the right job. Mm -hmm. Every job been the right job, you know. So um, you have you have like grab shots, um, and they're great files. They're they're sharp. It's just phenomenal. Yeah. But if you're serious, it's a tool that you add tangentially to your toolbox. But uh, if you're doing seriously, you're gonna want a DSLR or, or a mirrorless camera for uh, your high quality work. Just my opinion. That's great. How about you, Jim? Yeah, I, I agree. The iPhones will get better and better. I'm actually uh, expecting sometime with, within three or four years an app that when you, when you push here, out comes Chinese food. <laughs> that's so true. <laughs> I, I've that's been what, hope, that's I, what I'll update. I, I, I've been hoping and waiting. <laughs> but, but yeah, like Tony said, the, 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 the quality isn't there. And, and, and you know, the, the mirrorless cameras and the, and the digital SLRs can do so much more like fast frame rate for flying birds or mm -hmm. running horses or sports. Mm -hmm. And um, so, you know, I, I take iPhone pictures too, and, but they're, the, and they're very good for sharing on social media and emailing to people. Mm -hmm. You know, my, my Cocker Spaniel is cuddling with my cat on their bed. I'll, I'll grab my iPhone. Mm, absolutely you, you know because it's adorable it's a memory but but i'm not going to make a 16 by 20 print of it right right you know although that's, that is possible that is possible you can make a large print with our phone stuff. yeah it, yeah it, up to a point i know i know no but yeah. but but my, my point is just the quality isn't there and 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 the, the functionality is not there that's so true <clears throat> i just recently upgraded to the iphone 12 Pro and uh, and I really really do enjoy it. It is a huge step forward with the three lenses, where you can quickly oh, go sure. to an optical two point five, and and the the quality is wonderful. So <clears throat> I do see myself teaching a course on it in the near future, just like how to do the basics of composition and framing, and then some of the technical fun you know, little whiz bang filters and techniques, but it is a, it is a different beast. And, and you're right um, for, for those high quality, high res images and those fast frame shots, like the birds in fight, you're never going to get right. <laughs> right. on that. Right. So, right. but you're right. It is good for those other things. And that brings me back to the business question. If you really are serious about going for it in the business, uh, content marketing is continues to be king. So if you do see your 
cocker spaniel and your cat cuddling. That would make a great quick post to Instagram or Twitter. Um, and and, and then stock. You, exactly. So yeah, you, you definitely can do what you do. So thank you for asking that, Eric. I really appreciate it. And, uh, and I, I think that we're all wondering that there is massive amounts of technological change. And there's no doubt that, uh, you know, Steve Jobs said he wanted to make a dent in the universe. There's no doubt that he made a dent in the photography universe because oh, it yeah. has completely changed the landscape for us photographers. Um, and, you know, I know that many service photographers, Jim, you were talking earlier about there are different ways you can get into the business. And you're talking that most people want to be uh, photographing nature and landscapes and um, maybe doing studio work. But, but uh, there's also that element of being a service photographer in the sense of photographing portraits and weddings, that is, is a great way to make a living if that fits your personality type. Uh, but many of those photographers are telling me that they're very frustrated at how many people are just taking pictures with their smartphones while that's they're right. trying to get professional work done. That's right. That, that's, that's been a problem since uh, since a lot of wedding photographer friends yeah a, 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 a lot of wedding shooter friends and, and and their competition is is handing out like uh, these free cameras on tables you know and all the guests take pictures you know these yeah. free little box cameras you know with this built-in lens you know with the, and they're handing yeah. those out to people and they're and they're doing shooting the wedding you know, and other friends uh they just shoot uh, and give them a disc give them a flat fee and then give them give them a cd or whatever it is to file and they can do it and do what they want with them you know yeah, but that's changed radically, also. Yeah, radically, you know. Yeah. Hey, Tony, I got a different question for you. <clears throat> um, uh, what photo editing software, you know, would you recommend for the absolute beginner? And then I'll ask this of Jim as well. What, you know, what what do you guys recommend when it comes to that side of photography? When you're you've taken the shot and you really love it enough to put some uh investment into enhancing it well the photos app on the, the mac is good for just starting out you know um the elements if you want to be a little more advanced it, it's kind of uh, the easier part of photoshop mm -hmm. and of course um if you're serious photoshop and lightroom is kind of where you want to wind up eventually but yeah. um your yeah, photos are good a little tweaking here and there and put it up online sure do you do the uh the Creative Suite, the um, monthly with Adobe for the, you know, the you kind of locked into that. Yeah. Yeah. You kind of locked into that. If you want it's to use our Adobe. only there, choice there are, now. Yeah. Unless you want to use Affinity Pro, which is awfully good and it's not a subscription. Okay. But then you're off the, uh, you're off the Adobe cycle of like this, you know, these updating apps and all the integrated stuff. So you, you get out of that thing. But um, yeah, yeah, Affinity is, a, it, it's like, uh, it's great. Good to know. It's just not Adobe. Yeah, yeah, it's very good. How about you, Jim? Well, it depends upon what they want to do. If all they want to do is tweak color and contrast and exposure, mm -hmm. basically, um, Lightroom is fine, just mm -hmm. Lightroom. Mm -hmm. But if they want to edit the photographs, which seems to me kind of comes automatically. Like, you know, you take a picture of, of your child or an animal or even a tree. And you go, gosh, the little piece of trash here I didn't see. How do I get rid of that? Or the tree is, is growing out, you know, from the back of a person's head. Gosh, I didn't notice that. How do I get rid of that? So if, if a person is serious enough to think about software, you know, as far as I'm concerned, the only one to get is Photoshop. Mm -hmm. And, and, I know Photoshop is intimidating, mm -hmm. but let, let me share this with you. I, I had a professor in college who taught me how to use an electron microscope. I, I wanted to do some uh, electron microscopy of really cool things. And I sat down at this thing and talk about intimidating. Uh, electron microscope is not just like you used in the eighth grade. There's a whole control panel, dials, knobs, buttons, and vacuum chambers that do things. And, you know, I sat down and I went, wow. And, and she explained to me the law of diminishing knobs. 
And what that is, is the more you know what they do, the less there seems to be. So for example, if you had never seen a car before and, and you sit in the driver's seat, you go, oh my God, there's defrosters and windshield wipers and seat does this and does this and windows go up and down and we, we have the brake and the, and, and, you know, the, the gear shift thing and the audio, all these buttons and knobs. But to us, it's nothing because we know all what they do. Same with Photoshop. Wow. Once, once you know, for example, how to open the dialog box where you can adjust the color, hue and saturation, in other words, mm -hmm. go, oh, I know where that is. That's not hard. Mm -hmm. and, and, and once you know where to adjust contrast levels, oh, I got that. Mm -hmm. You see, yeah. For, there, there's just, there's a lot to remember, but every time you do an action two, two or three or four times, it's yours. Mm. That's and the, great. More, the more you do, the less intimidating it is. I love that. I love that metaphor. That's a great story. And, <laughs> and also because, yes, when you're a 16-year-old learning how to drive, all those things like the audio buttons you mentioned and the, <clears throat> and, and the heater or whatever, they, they all are there staring at you. But the more you learn, you learn, hey, this is a pretty minor thing. I'm, right. I'm not going to be I'm not going to be pushing in the yield flashlights that often so I can kind of compartmentalize it <laughs> the same way in Photoshop. You quickly learn, I, you know, I'm not really going to that 3D filter too often or I'm, I'm not really using, you know, that, uh, um, you know, I can't even think of them. I don't I don't use them so so much. Well, well uh, exactly. And there's many, many things that people who use Photoshop never touch because they don't know what they do and and they know enough to do everything they need to do mm -hmm. and the the, the uh, more advanced photoshop uh online training that i do um goes into a whole bunch of stuff that people never use like 3d you mentioned 3d <laughs> and, and, and then people go whoa this is incredible <laughs> <laughs> see that's great that it does have its purpose and its use yeah, that's awesome. Well, Jim's referring to uh, an online <clears throat> training that he does in Photoshop that I highly recommend. And, uh, you know, it's a great way to to further it. And, and I agree, there's just nothing like it. And it's always been a, a point of frustration for me because I want to help people where they're at. And so many of the Better Photo members say that they are using something else and, um, you know, maybe it's a free tool like GIMP, G-I-M-P, or, or maybe it's a, a more expensive uh, option, but it's something that is um, outside of that powerhouse, you know, that 800 pound gorilla of Photoshop. And it really does so much. Do you guys use Lightroom for your organization? Do you, do you use it to kind of keep track of all your assets? I remember. Oh, I do. Yeah. You, you, do? Tony, yeah. you, you, you do use it. <clears throat> yes, I do. Yeah. Um, Jim, I, I don't. Um, if, if I got involved in photography when Lightroom was already here, I probably would also. Mm -hmm. But I set up my system years before Lightroom came on the scene. And so I, I, I have my own system. I'll be happy oh, to. If, if you want to take the time, I'll explain it. It's very easy, but um, it works for me. Cool. Cool. Well, we're running out of time, so um, I'll go to the next question. And uh, I want to say to the participants, um, while we're, you know, we got a little bit of time left, I'm going to click a little button here that says lower all hands. And I noticed that a couple of you did raise hands. Um, if you do want me to uh, bring you on, then after I click this lower all hands, just go ahead and click that little raise hand thing again. That'll let me know that, yes, I really do want to ask a question live. And uh, feel free if you want to ask anything. And in the meantime, um, I'm going to just uh, let you think about that while I ask the next question that I have from our surveys. And that would be, <clears throat> um, uh, let's, let's see here. What's, what's a really one that will take us to the next level? Um, boy, we have covered a lot of ground. Okay, here's a real simple one that um, I think goes to you, Jim, and it's um, 
how do you make a photo good anywhere, not just in an ex ex exotic land? You know, we, we <laughs> talked about that in the beginning that we're all being forced to. And Tony, we'll bounce this question to you too, because you mentioned being forced to make hay out of where you are. But starting with you, Jim, how, how do you make a photo without traveling to some faraway beautiful destination? You know, um, I spent most of my life in Southern California, the LA area. And I used to think of Los Angeles as a photographic desert, like no, nothing much to photograph there. But it, I, I, I have a friend there. And as soon as I left, he started coming up with all kinds of amazing things to photograph in the LA area. So part of it is creativity. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, anybody can go in a field of flowers and do macro, you know? Um, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll tell you, one of, one of the great sources of photographs that, that I have discovered are clubs. There are clubs, there are clubs for everything. I in, thought in you fact, meant the nightclubs. Like <laughs> no, no. Um, one thing I did do in LA, in uh, like the middle 80s, I was looking at my photographic collection. I thought, gee, I don't have any reptiles or very, very few. So I put my thinking cap on and I called the Natural History Museum. And I said, are there any reptile groups or clubs in the LA area? And I, I talked to the herpetology department and he said, yeah, th there's one in Reseda. Well, that was 10 minutes from where I lived. So I went to the meeting, I met people and I got, I got access to snakes and geckos and iguanas and all kinds of stuff. So if, if you really love flowers, if, especially in big cities, there are, there are clubs for orchids and irises, exotic irises. I've seen them. Um, classic car meets. There, there's all kinds of things to photograph in your area. If, if you live along the Atlantic coast, um, they have tall ship get togethers several times all summer long. Um, and, you know, so if, if you expand what you like to photograph, there is just m abandoned buildings. I, I just found out, in fact, I, I'm trying to, this is another, another one of my domestic tours I'm trying to organize. I just found out that Gary, Indiana has thousands, oh, yeah. thousands of abandoned buildings. Mm -hmm. and, and so, you know, you, you can get permission to go in them and photograph these old factories or theaters or mansions, and it's, it's great. So it's, it's really a matter of putting your thinking cap on and trying to be as diverse as you possibly can. Uh, you know, if you like photographing fish, go to an aquarium store and, you know, ask the owner, can I take some pictures of your fish? And mm -hmm. so, you know, you, you got to be creative. I love that. I remember uh, there were many times when I would just go to people who had antique shores to say, hey, you know, would you mind if I just take pictures of these interesting objects? Yes, good idea. And you'd be like, yeah, sure, go ahead. And <laughs> then you get a lot of great photos of old telephones and fun things that you can use as ingredients in your, your composites. Like I know that you do that a lot, Jim Zuckman. So. Yeah. How about you, Tony? What do you do to make it alive right outside your door? Well, I basically started doing a uh, study where I was 25 years ago. And I do a show based on that, but it's just um, learning how to um, scout and photograph where you live. It's, it's not just driving around. You have to know where to go when. I go to the same spot all four seasons. If I like oh, a scene, yeah. it, take note of the sunrise. I mean, that's a great project always. Mm. The same shot in all four seasons. You know, can never miss, you know. And just uh, people don't know where they live. It, like I've driven past roads for years on the way out of town that I finally took about nine months ago. And it was like, oh, Barnes is like, where am I? You know, it's like, it's incredible. You know, there's a small little gorge behind the reservoir. It's like, what is this? You know, had no idea. Had no idea. No one takes all the roads where they live. Just drive around, man. Drive around. You know, it's amazing. It was, it was, you know, what the gym, you know, what the gym said, Jay-Z is, of course, you know, you know, the club thing is, he has, he has car clubs here. There's a ton of stuff to photograph. I ton, love that anyway. tip. Yeah, I love that tip about clubs, because it's true. There are different groups for every activity. And 
Um, sure. My family moved from the West Coast out to St. Louis, and um, I had that same feeling that you had, Jim, about Los Angeles, that, you know, it just wasn't my favorite <laughs> photographically, but I've been finding things, you know, there are, and like you said, I love that tip about connecting with meetups or groups, uh, clubs, uh, just finding the things that other people are really passionate about and having that creative flexibility to go, well, you know, I'm not a car guy, but I can see the beauty here. I yes. can see the lines. Yeah. But why not be a car guy? Why not be a car person? If it ex <laughs> you know, yeah, it expands. It's all composition. It's all light. You can find great light anywhere, mm -hmm. anywhere. That and I've got so a number of slides of love, like, you know, your terrible light in, in Capitol Reef. And there's bad light everywhere. You know, there's great light everywhere, you know. And, th and the, it's a pretty cool to like, you know, you know, drive five minutes and they get a world-class sunset shot and then drive home five minutes. Oh, Something very cool about that. <laughs> that is very cool. Um, I'll take one question here from John. He asked, uh, why did you create Better Photo? <clears throat> and I said that at the beginning of this call, it was because I was inspired by the idea of publishing, which is totally different, a to totally new landscape now that doesn't have the same meaning that it had in 1996. But he asked also, where will Better Photo be in five years? And it's really simple, John, bigger and better. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's all about growth and progress. Growth makes, makes you that's happy. Easy. Yeah. <laughs> um, here's, a, here's a question for you <laughs> while we wrap this up. Um, when you're photographing so much, do you begin to see life around you through a lens in a way? Do you, you know, is it like when I was a waiter, I would, I would go home and I couldn't stop thinking about waiting tables. I, when I was a server, I couldn't stop thinking and I would have nightmares. I would wake up in cold sweats in the middle of the night because I hadn't given that person coffee. And it's been like seven hours that are waiting for their coffee. <laughs> so that was when I was serving tables back when I was a teenager. But um, do you find that for yourself now? Do you do you see life almost through a lens? And is it okay? Yes and yes. I, I would I would do the same thing. Yes and yes. <laughs> That's great. Well, um, we'll wrap it up here because I do want to respect your time. Um, there was one other question here from uh, Beatrice. Is there any thought to bring back Jay-Z and Tony S? So I'm just going to say, hmm, hmm, that's an interesting idea. <laughs> Not a bad idea. <laughs> And um, I do want to just say thank you guys so much for giving us an hour of your time and answering these questions. And let's hope that this is one of many times I, for one, had a wonderful time. And, and I know that others are saying thank you, thank you, thank you. There's just uh, so much appreciation for you guys because not only you, did you do it, you did it, you know, and we're looking at you going, you did it. And, and there, there's a Working saying, photography. yeah, with about photography, there's a saying, when you find someone who has done it, you want to mimic, model, and master. You want to mimic, mimic, model, and master what they do. So that's what you've given us tonight. And it's an, an incredible gift. So uh, thank you so much. You. It's an honor to speak with you. And I, I look forward to talking with you many, many, many times in the future. And uh, yeah, Look thanks. Look forward to it, Jim. It's, it's, uh, it, it's my pleasure. Thank you very much. Yes, great. thank you. Thank you for asking me, Jim. It's been a pleasure. Oh, absolutely. I'm so glad. To great seeing you guys. You know, it's been quite a while. <laughs> it's been quite a while. So I appreciate your spontaneity <laughs> and just uh, jumping for it when when the opportunity came up. And I'm, I'm just so You're glad about that. Yeah. <laughs> It just goes to show that, you know, time is relative and all that really matters is the present moment. And, and I'll, I'll, Ultimately, I'll, end, yeah. Yeah. I'll end with the same thing. I remember one time when we did a Better Photo Summit, I just, uh, it, was, it just came out of my mouth before I knew it. I just <laughs> ended the summit saying, I love you. And I love you guys. So thank you so much. Yeah, love, love you back, man. Thank you, Jim. <laughs> thank all you, right. Jim. 
You guys have a great night. Thanks again. Uh, Take care, Jay-Z. Bye, everybody. You too, Tony. Thank you, man. See you later.